Kyle, today we're going to be talking about how to assess or to judge our sources. It's one of those things. There are thousands, millions of sources out there written by people, articles, books, that you, websites that you could utilize in your paper. But you have to make sure that you're using the best ones. We really only want to use sources that are strong, have credibility, because when the sources are good, we get that credibility for ourselves. If the sources are bad, though, our own papers suffer because we're not really showing that we're using the best information available to us. Okay, so if we use a source that's bad, we lose credibility as well. Okay. So how do we judge? Well, part of it is what was outlined in the Quick Access Compact that you read about, so you definitely want to keep those criteria in mind. But I also like to boil it down to another four criteria. Some of these were mentioned in the book. Uh, I'm putting them in slightly different wording, so still pay attention to that, but this is also important. Okay. And when we think about assessing sources, for me, you want to look at these criteria when you're looking at an article or book to determine whether or not you want to use it. Those are accuracy, currency, bias, and support. Okay. Now accuracy, that simply means is the information correct? And you may say, well, that's what, that's what I'm hoping to find out by reading the source, right? But you can't just trust a source to be accurate by itself, right? The reason that we do multiple sources in a paper. The reason we look at multiple perspectives is in part to make sure that we're actually seeing a consistency of information, okay? So when you're looking at the accuracy of a source, you want to think about, in terms of other sources as well, what is agreed upon? Okay? What is factual? What is just not up for debate? Some of what the sources say are up for debate, obviously, because different authors have different views. But first of all, think about what is the factual things, because if that's not accurate, if they don't have the basics down, then the source is highly questionable. Okay, and that's the next one. What is questionable? Okay. If they're presenting something that you find another source just flatly denying and two or three others agree and say that something is just simply wrong, well, that's a red flag. That's not to say the source you're looking at is wrong. I mean, the majority has been wrong from time to time, of course. But it's at least something that you should look into and make sure that what you're looking at is accurate, okay? Uh, so what's questionable then? Is there anything that's false? Because if you find anything in the source that's simply false, simply untrue, well, that, that calls it into question. It's not necessarily something you can't use, but I would, I would strongly uh, question it, okay? Uh, the next one is currency, okay? And currency just means how current it is or how recent, okay? And currency is relative. Okay, it depends on the topic, okay, based on the topic, okay? Uh, so you want to think about when did developments happen? Are developments accounted for in the source? Okay. If you're talking about gun control, that's something that's been talked about for a long time. Obviously, certain things recently have happened that would need to be accounted for, but it's a topic that is not just coming into existence, okay? So if you had a source that was older, it would probably be okay for some of the big topics, right? Uh, however, let's say you were writing a paper about an urban legend related to ISIS, right? If uh, somebody said, for instance, that ISIS was funding a certain community college, right, just to freak people out. Well, ISIS has only been around, you know, for a few years. So if you look for a 10-year-old source, you're not really going to find anything about it. Okay, so you need to take that into account for your sources. Okay, you also need to be cons uh, considerate when it comes to currency. Does the source come before some big development happened? Okay, if you're talking about something that changed just a year ago, there was a big change in, say, science, and you have to make sure that the source is recent enough to account for that, or else it could potentially have false information. Bias, uh, as we'll talk about in another part of this module, has to do with is a writer pushing an agenda, pushing a certain attitude and opinion. Obviously, not all sources have to be purely informational. There are argumentative sources, but you do want to pay attention to are they still reporting facts, reporting on things fairly, right? Or is there bias overshadowing that? Okay. Uh, and then support simply comes down to are they supporting their writing with research? Are they backing it up with cited sources, just like I expect you to do in your writing? 
if they're not, if they're not citing where they're getting their information from, that's a big red flag. The best researchers tell you where the research comes from, uh, oddly enough. Okay. So let's think about how accuracy, currency, bias, and sport could come into play. Okay. Let's say you were writing about the link between the MMR vaccine and autism. And you wanted to find out whether or not that was true, that the vaccine causes autism. And you found a source that said that it did. Okay. So you wanted to check the credibility of it. Okay. And the first thing you would look at is accuracy. Okay. And the source says that the vaccine does lead to autism. So, you know, without looking at other sources, you can't judge the accuracy. So you'll come back to that one. Okay. Let's look to support. Right? Well, if I'm looking at my article, maybe it's read by a doctor, Dr. Andrew Wakefield somebody who's a very uh, support, uh, educated person to be a doctor, okay? And the bias, it seems like they're presenting a lot of great evidence, okay? So far, so good, right? But then I look and see the currency. Well, this article's from 1998. Some of you probably weren't even alive, right? Or uh, just barely. But in 1998, we're talking about a nearly 20-year difference. So maybe it's not that current, right? We're not talking about 100 years old, but it's certainly not fresh. Uh, so you know what? I decided I gotta I gotta do some more research about my research, right? I gotta really figure out what's this accuracy. The currency doesn't matter, okay? The way to do that is to look at other sources. Okay? So if I was to go and search for this article and about this person, and I say, oh, the original source by Andrew Wakefield, and this is a real article that led people to believe that autism was called by the vaccine, has been retracted, meaning the original publication has taken it away. If I do a Google about this person, Andrew Wakefield, just to see how accurate his information is, I see, oh, the fraud investigation? Oh, no, that's not good, right? Uh, let's see, Andrew Wakefield, disgraced anti-vax doctor returns with documentary to make a film festival. Oh, disgraced. Okay. Well, all of a sudden it's looking like, well, maybe the source isn't the best to use. And the way I found that out was by paying attention to what other sources have to say, okay? Now, there's going to be more opinions. I don't just want to read the first one I find, but you see the idea of checking the context of your sources, okay? That's a really important part of judging the source, not only what's in it itself, which is important, right? Uh, but also what other sources say, how it looks in the conversation of knowledge. Okay, so when you're looking at your own sources for your urban legend essay, make sure you do that, because as we're looking at how material can be misinterpreted in society, we want to make sure the research we're looking at is not misinterpreted at all.